What's up, fellas? It is 1 o'clock, and I want to get Scotty on here, so I'm just going to give it a second for him to pop on. So bear with me. We're getting ready, starting our second episode. Um, let's see here who's popping on. Guys, as you pop on in this episode two of the Hey Bro Show, please, please uh, tell us where you're from. Um, this, if this is your first or second episode, and just say hello. So let's see. I'm putting my boy Scotty on. Super excited that we're in the second one. The numbers are jumping 17 on 18. Hey, guys, just everybody say hello. Comment below. Give us some. There he is. What's up, bro? All right. We're on. People are popping on. Guys, so just so you can hear, can we get some thumbs up? Show us some love that people are, in fact, uh, that everybody sees what's going on. Hey, Jimmy, good. All right, guys, I am going to get, I see, good, good, good. We're getting some love. Guys, we're going to get started right away because we don't want to, we know how important your time is and how valuable it is. So, you know, we're really excited about the second Hey Bro show as we're here to talk about time management. But first, I want to kick it over, introduce it to my co-host, Scotty Hobbs, father of five kids. You guys heard us talk about ourselves a little bit last week. You know, he's a 14-star Lifetime Diamond Millionaire Club member. I'm super excited, considered one of my best friends now. So, Scotty, I'm going to kick it over to you to say hello. David, I feel the same. You're one of my closest bros, and it's awesome uh, co-hosting the show with you. Uh, so, you guys know a little bit about David in case this is your first time ever. David is, uh, has an amazing career. Um, so I want you guys to know that to be part of Beachbody, you don't have to like just want to do Beachbody. He has an amazing career. He's doing Beachbody, um, created a full-time income, basically has him. His wife walked away from teaching. He's got three daughters, uh, <coughs> six-figure earner, elite, two times, uh, one of the top male Beachbody coaches. So you're learning from someone great today. So with David, with that being said, I'll turn it over to you to start this out with time management and help us understand what this means. Good, guys. So great. We're going to get right into, we're going to just start hitting you guys with some points. And I have a couple points for you guys. And I think time management is a big one. I can tell you guys, for me, basically beach body and being a lieutenant with the state police is two full-time incomes. I could say that. So it is the utmost importance that I realize how to manage my 86,400 seconds in a day. So the first point I want to come at you guys with time management is you have to make sacrifices. So guys, if you in fact are somebody that's still working and this is a side hustle for so many of us as we start out as it was for me and still is in a way because I still work full time, you have to understand that sacrifices are going to have to start somewhere. So if you only have the 24 hours in a day, you may have to give up some TV. You may not be able to watch every basketball game, every so, you know, baseball game, every hockey game you know, every NFL game, you in fact may have to make sacrifices of giving up some TV. And I'll be honest, probably maybe give up some of your like, uh, you know, softball intramural leagues as, as if you think it's D1, right guys? So like you have to in fact make sacrifices. So for me guys, like real quick, like today, I coached my daughter's softball game. We had picture day. I told Scotty, like we literally had like 15 minutes. He has stuff going on with his daughter's dance stuff. Came home really quickly doing this. Kristen's at our daughter's soccer. I'm running to soccer. And then we're coming home and having a party for me turning 40 years old on May 5th. But the point is it's a sacrifice because I treat this like a business and I'm committed to being here for you guys. So you're going to have to give up to go up. Maybe write that down, guys. Give up to go up. Guys, number two is you need to plan out your week. Okay? You need to sit down and treat this business like a business as if it's doctor's appointments. Like you don't miss a doctor's appointment. If your boss at your job said you are working nine to five, you know what your schedule is throughout the week. So number two is sit down on a Sunday, schedule out when you're going to get your workouts in, schedule out when you're going to work the business, and know when, in fact, you're going to work your hours. You either control your hours or they're going to control you. So you need to plan out your week, and you have to be very, very intentional about it. Guys, my third point, and then a the last quick fourth point that I'm going to give it over to Scotty, is you need to be communicating with your significant other, with your spouse, with your roommates, whoever it is. Because I dealt with, with my wife, Kristen, beforehand. This is very easy that either they're, they're going to get disgruntled or angry because you're trying to work the business and they don't know exactly what it's about. So you need to sit down. You need to speak to that significant other. And you need to say, this is my week, Monday through Friday. These are my workouts. What do you need from me? When do I need to do for the kids? Where do I need to be? And fill in all those number one priority things, which should be your family first. 
those are your non-negotiables. My coaching, my kids' daughter's hockey, that's my non-negotiables. Then when you have it mapped out, sit there and look at your week and, and schedule in your beach body business time to work. Okay, so communicate with your spouse and plan out your week. And my fourth point, guys, and I want to come to finish is you have to be intentional. Capitalize that. Be intentional about this as a business. Do not wake up every single day and just say, ah, I'm just going to, I hope I work out. I hope I work my business tonight at 930 when I get home. I hope, guys, hope is going to get you nowhere. You have to be committed to treating this not like a hobby, but like a business. I wake up every single day with the intention that I will get the four vital behaviors done. And for me, guys, it's 4.50 a.m. alarm wake up, 4.50 to 5.30, checking in with challengers while my energizer's kicking in, right? Doing my workout, checking in with my challenge group. Then I'm working. Then I have family time blocked off. And I know I'm coming at you guys fast, but I have family time blocked off like 5 to 8. And then I'm grinding. TV doesn't exist in my life. Sports really don't exist in my life. You know, I basically work this business every day, 8 to 10.30, 11, 11.30. And maybe in the beginning, guys, you have to sacrifice some sleep. I'm not condoning you should give up sleep, but I know Scotty hustled real hard in that first year to two years to get to where he is and sacrifice sleep. You're going to have to make sacrifices. So, guys, those are my four points, and I want to kick it back over to Scotty um, with time management. Go ahead, bro. Thank you, David. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to touch on some of the things that David shared about, share, share a couple experiences, stories about my journey so you can relate them into your journey and where you're at currently. But I'm going to hit it from a little bit of a different perspective and get you guys thinking a little bit deeper and a little bit longer term with perspective on time management. So um, David talked a lot about prioritizing. What, one thing I want you guys to understand, we do have a busy packed day. We're running. Um, uh, we, didn't, we don't plan who's going to say what. We're, we play off of each other and we just, we just execute and make it happen and, and listen to what you guys need and then share from there. But it's important first and foremost that you know what your priorities are. Like figure out your top four, top five priorities, write them down. Mine's my relationship with God, my relationship with my spouse and kids, and then um, my ability to serve and connect and help other people. So those are my priorities. So that's one of the first things that um, I want to share with you guys. The next thing I want you guys to understand, you can write these down, is a lot of times we think of time management as a mechanical process of to-do lists. And, and I have a to-do list. I have a checklist of 10 things to do every single day. But time management is not just mechanical. It's emotional. And what I mean by that is a lot of times you're going to have to make decisions not based off of a mechanical checklist, but off of your emotions. Um, it, it, and, and I'll explain that. I know it's, it might be a little bit confusing from the beginning, but it's going to have to do with the way that you think. So the first way of thinking uh, when you think about time management to lead into this is, like, how can I create more time? And David said we've got 86,400 86, minutes, seconds in a day. So we think about how can I create more time? But the reality of the fact is we cannot create more time. That's, that's how much time each of us has every single day. So the second way to think about um, that, because we cannot create more time, is like how can we prioritize our time? That's what David talked about. So creating, like that all started with, if you haven't studied or, or learned from Stephen Covey, listen to some of his stuff, a lot of stuff on time management. Um, but it's a, a, kind of like a two-way thinking, a two-dimensional thinking, which means you put one thing, like if you have a, a checklist of 10 things, you take item number seven, put it to 10 so you can get other things done that are more important. Prioritizing, which David talked about, which is your workouts, your personal development, your recognition, and your invites. Those are the priorities of, of Beachbody Coaching in the Four Vital Behaviors. So you should put those in your to-do list at the very beginning. That's one of the very first things. So it means basically pushing one thing back uh, so you can do other things of more priority in the first. Or you, the other way to do it is you do it faster or you do more things. That's how you prioritize and it's like juggling. And what, what that means, and I'm going to ask, David, can you hear me? Because some people can't hear me. Yeah, I, I, can, hear, I can hear you, Scott. Okay. Awesome. So uh, the juggling aspect, like if we juggle for too long, you're on a, 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 you're on a course of crashing in the future. So to help you guys understand that, there's, there's a third point that I want to write. So you guys think about first is, um, uh, first way is um, getting, like, your, the, we talked about getting your priorities straight. The next one is um, I want you to think about multiplying your time. And what that means is being significant. It's a, like a three-dimensional thinking. It's thinking not just today, but in the future. So first with the, the importance, like what is most important? That was number one. There's urgency in that. Which one is more urgent that I got to do? The next one was like significance. It's like which one? I mean, the next one was 
um, the importance. Which, one, which items are most important? Put them towards the beginning. And the third one is significance. And what I want you guys to think about, write this down, is how long does this activity that I do matter? It's not what is the most important thing to do today. That's what we talked about with prioritizing. But what's the most, what is the most important thing to do that's going to matter in the future? So write this down. It's what can I do today that will make tomorrow or the future better or easier? So to do this, move on to the next point I want you to write down. You have to give yourself emotional permission. That's why I say it's, time management is not just mechanical. It's emotional. You have to give yourself emotional permission to spend time on the things today that will create more time for you in, 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 tomorrow and in the future, in three years from now, five years from now, 10, 10 years from now in your business. So I, I could go on that for that forever, but I got to move through this and give you some examples. I want you to get into that thinking. I'm going to give you some examples. Like when I started, similar to, to David, like I got up, I, got, I was at work every day, five to five. So I get up 15 minutes before work. I'm checking into my challenge group. On my drive to car, I had the slide edge, the compound effect as a CD in my car. It never came out. I listened to it over and over on the, on the 15, 20 minute drive to work, 15 minute drive back. My hour lunch, I blocked into four, four blocks of time and they were scheduled for prospect calls with challengers, prospect coaches, or follow up calls, uh, setting goals and talking about goals with my coaches. If they bailed on me, I didn't just scroll Facebook or get sad about it. I blogged or I made a YouTube video. I took action with those things that'll make a difference in the future that I talked about. Doing something today that'll make a difference in the future. And I got to talk fast through this. But when I got home from work, my wife was gone and I had three little girls. I would do P90X and it couldn't be the perfect version of P90X. I would do it with them crawling around me, walking around, you know, crying. I would pick one up. I would squat with one, um, you know, make that apart. And the cool thing about that, guys, as a dad, as a man, other people see that. That's going to inspire them to be a better person, to be a better father, to realize that they don't have to take more time away from their kids to work out, that they could do it at home and be that example. So... After that, similar to David, 8.30 to 12.30. 8.30 at night when I put the kids to bed at 12.30, I was grinding on those most important priority activities. And guys, when I went to bed at 12.30, if I didn't have my whole checklist of 10 things done, but I did the priorities, I was good with that, okay? So here's the one thing I think a lot of people miss is like I ran a service department and a shipping department. I wrote manuals. I had a one, one headset in my ear. Prior to Beachbody, I listened to music all day. I'm a musician. I love music. I listened to a Millionaire Next Door, Think and Grow Rich, and The Slight Edge over 60 times each in my first year. Like, you can listen to Millionaire or Think and Grow Rich one time in an entire 12-hour shift. It's 10 hours and 55 minutes on Audible. So you can listen to that book in one day and listen to it over and over. So those thoughts became uh, my reality. And what happened is that when I came home from work, those thoughts came out in my words to people. I believed it. They came out into my words, okay? So we really have to fire through this. Um, but remember that, as I talked about, what can I do to, what's the thing that I can do today? Giving myself emotional permission to spend time on something today that will create more time for the future. As you think about that, you got to think about delegation. And that's a whole separate topic. But, for example, the image for the Hey Bro Show was not created by David or myself. It was delegated to somebody else. Okay? So there's things in your business as you grow and as you grow as a leader, as you grow as a business owner, that you can delegate to other people so that you can share in your area of your gift. So understand that. I won't go into detail on that. But, but I have two full-time assistants that help me. They work full, full-time, not part-time, assistants to help me with the things that I could do, but other people could do them just as well as me. Gives me the ability to get on the phone with prospects. Gives me the ability to do my workouts, to do my videos, to, to talk to people, to do the things that create more for me in the future. So let me say this, guys. You've got to make, you got to put your priorities first. first. You've got to make every minute count. And I'm going to share, like I shared with you guys in the beginning, like today I'm the same way, okay? It's the same thing. I delegate more obviously now, but I do all the vital behaviors and the most important things. And part of my four vital behaviors, this may be one of the biggest secrets I can give you, is I do that one thing that I shared with you in step five, step four and five. What can I do today that will make tomorrow or, or the future better and emotional permission for me to spend time on things today that create more time for you tomorrow? I'm going to give you a specific example for that. I, my role as a father, I put my 10-year-old and 8-year-old to bed. I, I read scriptures and, and pray and do that stuff with them. But when I put my 10-month, uh, or my almost, geez, time flies, 21-month-old <laughs> to bed, he lays there, and I bring my laptop downstairs. And the last two nights, I wrote a blog post sharing transformation stories of two of my prospects. So I wrote two blog posts, 
um, while I'm putting my kids to bed. I guarantee most of you guys are scrolling Facebook or texting or watching the show. I'm blogging. I'm doing things that are creating more for me in the future. And to end it out, because we're right at the time, is guys, um, in the beginning, I, I started making videos for the specific for that specific reason. Like, you're gonna get people asking, "How's the challenge group work?" They're gonna ask you, "How does how do you place your coaches? How does the compensation plan work?" So I made videos in the very beginning. Every time I got a question, I answered that in a video, so that when I was at work on a 12-hour shift, and my coach, let's say David, texts me and say, "Hey, bro, I have a coach signing up, or I'm gonna sign up my spouse. Where do I put him?" I text him back, "David, great question. I have a video for you. I'll pop him the link." And that way, it saves me time. So I didn't create more time. I did something one day that gave me more time in the future and it, for tomorrow and for the future. So there's a lot more to expand on that, but I know David's got to run, and i got to run to dance rehearsals and dance recitals today. But I hope this helps you guys out. And, David, I'm going to pass it back to you. No, guys, Scotty, great info. And, guys, you could see how fast we're talking. We have so much value <coughs> to give you guys, but, you know, we want to try to keep it around 15 minutes. But the one thing I want to add with Scotty is the one thing, I, guys, I said on the national wake-up call is you have to find your hidden minutes. And Scotty last night, while he's putting his kids to bed, he's writing a blog post. I can tell you every single day, I'm the one cleaning the dishes in my family after dinner, and I'm listening to personal development. What are you doing in the car on the way to work, on the way back? Are you scrolling Facebook, listening to the radio, or are you powering your mind? So find your hidden minutes and, and in fact, execute on the vital behaviors and manage your time better and remember the last thing guys is work with what you have with where you are because what you have is plenty so scotty and i i have an assistant scotty has two full-time assistants we're not saying you need an assistant it got to a point where eventually you're there but you have to own the level with where you are right now maybe it's just finding that hour a day to be a power hour but you need to be intentional about it and you need to find your hidden minutes so guys to wrap up on this call we have a new hashtag we're going to always end the call with Man up. Hashtag man up. So man ideas up. mean nothing unless they're put into action. So if you don't today, take what we gave you today and implement it by tomorrow night, you're wasting your time. You need to be intentional was my last point. You need to set priorities like Scotty said, multiply those priorities and have significance in what's important to you. Find your hidden minutes. Man up, boys. Otherwise, we will be back. Scotty, have anything else? That's it for no. today. My challenge is there. If you don't take action on what you learned today, like I'm going to say in the most kind, humble way, it's shame on you for taking time away from your family right now if you're not going to execute on it. Guys, it's time to man up. Yep. Man up, guys. Enjoy the rest of your weekend. Thanks, Scotty. We'll talk, guys. Love you guys. Bye-bye. Peace.